Jeremy Sistrunk. Uh, okay. I'm um, the owner of Sistrunk Software Development Company. I'm okay. a sole proprietor. Um, I work for myself. Uh, okay. I'm an independent uh, software developer. So I asked you a question about the afterlife. Man, what's your thoughts about the afterlife? My thoughts about the afterlife is your life begin and end right here. You don't even know whether or not you're dead right now. Okay. So are you an atheist? No. How would you describe your worldview? I believe that there is a God, but I believe that religion brings up divisions, so I don't really care to talk about religion. Oh, gotcha. And you know what? I'm kind of like right there with you. Like, I'm a pastor, but I, you may, will you be surprised if I told you I don't like really talking about religion either? Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, because it's become something different. Okay, so tell me what's going to happen to Jeremy the day that he, I mean, I hope you live to be 200 years old. But what's gonna happen the day that Jeremy dies? What do you think is gonna happen to you? I don't yourself? know. You have no nor idea. Nor do I at all? like to care. Spec nor do I care to speculate. Oh, because you don't even care. No. Really? Yes, because what I do every day brings me solace and comfort. Would you give me one of your eyes for a million dollars? Why? If I gave you a million dollars, would you give me one of your eyes? No. Of course not. Like if you, if I gave you fifty million dollars, would you give me both of your eyes? No, but Probably the not. allegory is a little strange. Yeah. I don't know where you're going of with course. this. Of course. Where I'm going with this is, you, you care about your eyes, right? Yes. But mo what's more important is your soul. Yes. So, so for you not to really care about your soul, of course you care about your soul. No, no, no. You've made a correct an assumption. Okay, what do you mean? Why did you say I don't care about my soul? Okay, because you, says, uh, you said, uh, you, meant, you mentioned a statement that you don't No, care. no, no. I don't care about death. You don't care about I'm death? Fine. You, you, okay, so heaven and hell exist in your worldview? I, I, be, I don't believe in heaven or hell. You don't? I believe that you should do what you need to do. Okay. You're an adult. I got you. Tell me what your thoughts is about Jesus in general. I don't care to speculate on whether or not who he was, what he does. Yeah. Um, whether you look at it from a Jewish perspective, okay. Christian perspective. Right. He... He personifies something for someone. Okay. I'll just give you a snippet of what he said. Now, this is really, this is a radical statement. Unfortunately, nope. even though you say it, it won't have much effect. Okay. All right. That doesn't have to at all. It's because it's speculative. Okay. Second sister historian, named, a guy named Josephus, wrote about Jesus. He wasn't a follower of Jesus. He just wrote about the events of the time. And one of the things that Jesus said was, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life. Where are you citing this from? Uh, this is this is not necessarily from, this is, is from Bible, mm -hmm. but it's It could historical. be one of his companions. There's a lot uh, of companion Bibles. Right? There's a lot of, sure. Right. A lot of what I'm sharing with you is not, you don't even need the Bible to reconstruct what I'm saying. It is true that he it, there was a real life crucifixion, a man named Pilate. Yeah, he times. actually, no, a man named Jesus was actually crucified. Okay. Was crucified. Right. But his life and mm -hmm. how he lived is so speculative based yep. on the, the where you live, where you're uh -huh. introduced to Jesus. Right. He has so many different forms and he's a speculative figure. Okay. So thus, what I believe mm -hmm. is just, hey, there's a good force. Okay. Look at what he life like. Yes, you know, the Bible was supposed to be the guidelines of how to live a good life. Yeah, right. I grew up with Christian morals. How gotcha. can I not call myself Christian? Mm -hmm. But if I don't agree with what they're saying, yeah. how can I say, yeah. you know, whatever? Yeah. So you so, just don't agree. What, what don't you agree with? And what do you disagree with? I do not do agree with? with LGBTQIQ discrimination. Sure. Some people don't particularly agree with gays, lesbians, or whatever, worshiping within their place of worship. Okay. I do not agree with that. Okay. Are you are you are you homosexual or bisexual? Or? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Why does that have to do with anything? Yeah, I'm just. Cause, cause and that's the, actually what I'm what I'm telling you. Okay. To educate you. Yeah. When you hear that in the okay. future, don't question whether or not that person's gay or whatever. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done it. Okay. That's a good point. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't You're have done fine. that. Um. We all you, learn it. Yeah, we are. We are. So how did you come to your conclusion um, about about Jesus and the LGBTQ? Is it something that 
It was something that affected me when I was young. Okay, in what way? My first best friend in life was okay. gay. Okay, okay. And I made some very incorrect in assumptions. Right. I told him he was going to hell, uh -huh. and I feel real terrible every single day that I've made that mistake. I see. So, uh, and that was because of the beliefs that I was raised, raised up growing. Yeah. He had to educate me. Okay. That's actually my main thing. Yeah. I went to my pastor, I asked him about it. Well, we got into a disagreement, and it just hasn't been reconciled ever since. Oh, really? How long yeah. ago was that? I was 13. Okay. What, what, so what questions did you have for your, the pastor that didn't answer? Well, it was quite a few, okay. but the main thing is, is simply, I asked him, I wanted him to clarify uh -huh. why in the Bible did it say that homosexuals were an abomination. Okay. I was like, maybe there, maybe I was misconstruing the word. Okay. Because I do understand the Bible was a translation, uh -huh. it's Hebrew, so I had, yeah. maybe I needed to seek more in-depth right. knowledge. Okay. Well, I didn't feel like the, the pastor had the in-depth knowledge gotcha. to answer the question. I see what you're saying. I'm not going to sit here and find the time to find a speculative answer. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm a really rational person. Yeah, I can tell. I can see that. So, as soon as something is just not there, I'm not going to waste time. Okay. Like, I got civil rights to fight. Sure. I got things to do. Right. I'm not about to do that. I got you. Because yeah. those things can distract you from your mission. And yeah. you got some things to do. Right. We got souls to actually save. Yeah. There is souls right across in that jailhouse that really do need saving. Yeah. Everyone's worried really quick about worried about what they're about to do when they die. But yeah. they're not worried about their health. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I encourage people to think about what they do every day. Death won't make you fear if you're yeah. doing the right thing. Some of my students challenged me to get on a ropes course. It's 40 feet in the air, and they had three straps on my back that can hold a thousand pounds a piece. Three straps, one one strap can hold a thousand pounds. I had no chance of falling off. But I didn't. They're so, rated for a thousand. Rated for a thousand pounds. But I didn't want to take a chance on the ropes, so I, I tried not to fall off the ropes. Mm -hmm. So I got halfway, and the partner I was going with started to fall off the ropes. He catches my arm, and guess who? Guess who falls off the ropes? I fall off the ropes. I fall. He pulls himself back up, and I fall off the ropes. And you know what I'm thinking in my mind? Is that I'm, I'm about to die. I can't believe I did this. Yeah. But you know what ended up happening? The ropes caught me. Right. right? The ropes caught me. Like, I knew they were going to catch me. I just didn't want to take a chance on it. Right. But after I got back on the ropes course, I didn't have a single bit of fear. As a matter of fact, my time went up even more. Like, I enjoyed my the, the rest of the time on the ropes course. You know why my fear went away and I enjoyed the, the ride much better? It's because I knew if I failed, that the ropes were going to catch me. Right. I was good for the rest of the time. Me and you are in the same boat. Right. So here's what I'm saying, that we need to be concerned about our souls simply because if you don't really know what's going to happen to you when you die, it actually makes the, the, the first part of your life so much more intense. It makes it much more fun. It does, but it's a risk because you don't know what's going to happen in the afterlife specifically. Everything's a risk. Yes, it is. Even but, if you're wrong, you, you've taken a risk. That's true. That's true. We're all taking risks. So next few, let me just give you how you can be okay with your soul on the day, on the day you die. All right. Because I do the work. All right. You you got a lot of you got good, decent morals, but let me line you based on the commandments. Let me just give you a good person test. I understand. All right. You okay. said a good person test. Yep. You're testing me to see if I'm a good person. Yes, you mind. You can. Yeah, we can do it. If let's see how valid it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so because this is the test that God is going to judge us by based on where we're going to spend eternity, based on what the Bible says. I'm just coming okay. from a biblical perspective. Let's and then go. See if it makes sense. So, uh, man, don't let me offend you. But this and is the I'm test. also going to ask you where these questions come I from. I will. I will. I'll tell you exactly where they come from. All right. And outside the book of Revelations. Okay. <laughs> because I'm not, that's that's definitely a fever dream. I'm a little afraid to ask you this, man. But how many don't lies, how many lies, how many lies have you told in your life? I've told a lot. I have to. All right. What do you call somebody that tell a whole bunch of lies? A lie. Well, I call them mean. So I don't okay. really know. I don't really call people liars. Okay. According I to, lie. So I'm good. Yeah, me, me too. And according to the Bible, we aren't considered to be liars. All right. Based on what the Bible says. All right. Have you ever stolen anything, even if it's small? Yeah. All right. What do you call somebody that steals? Me. <laughs> okay. All right. 
And just think about it, me and you go into a bank and I robbed the bank for a million dollars and you robbed the bank for two cents, which one of us are bank robbers? You. No, I didn't know. That's complete. No, they don't no. go together. No, they don't. Okay, all right. <laughs> Maybe I, 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 okay, let's 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 say let's say two thousand, right? Yeah. Now I did rob a bank then. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. What about if I kill fifty people and you kill one person? Which one of us emerged? Does that go together? What you think? Yeah. No. No. The the mass murderer is worse than the guy who probably True. could have had a justified murder. Right. That's the law. True. But if the, the penalty for murder is death penalty, even if I kill 50 or I kill one person, we no. still don't get the same sentence, right? No, 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 you won't. No? Okay. That's not, that's not, that, that's up to a judge and a jury. Okay. All right. uh, Jesus said this about adultery. You, he says, you've heard it, it was said that you should not commit adultery. Uh -huh. And he says, but I say to you, if anyone looks at a woman with lust or a man, I'm gonna you tell commit you adultery right now, in your heart. I don't really care about adultery because we got too many men out here being deadbeat dads beating on their wives. Yep. And that's to me way more important. Rape, beating wives, yes. domestic abuse and My, things like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not for it. Right. So I would like a whole comprehensive adultery plan. What do you, okay, what do you mean by that? It needs to be more rules, I yeah. guess. I guess yeah, yeah, we have yeah. to tell people not to rape. But here's where it starts. It starts in our heart. And the Bible says even if you think it, you, you, you break the standard. Even if it comes out of your mind. And then, so we all watch pornography, or had sex out of marriage, or, you know what I'm saying? No, we haven't. <laughs> well, I haven't had sex out of marriage. I don't really cheat on anyone. Okay. Like, right. I've been cheated on, but. You, you're a better man than me, dude. I mean, no, it's just, it's, we're all learning. Yeah. We're all stupid. Yeah. Have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? No. Never use his name? I, I don't be like, God, you. Okay. I don't. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, you are a lot better than I am. But I mean, no. I've said bad words. Sure. I mean, I think I have better curse words than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> You're a very interesting guy, man. But just think about it. Even though you are a, a lot better person than I am in a lot of your morals. Not really. In a lot of your morals, all right? Mm -mm. But the standard, you have any idea what the standard is to get into heaven? If heaven, right? You have any idea what the standard is? I mean... It's going to surprise you. It's, I don't think I'm getting into heaven. Do you? It, it's the standard on me. I, I mean, we just it. talked about how if, if I'm a better man, then I don't... If, if better men are going to hell, hell is fine. The hell is fun? Yeah. All right. Well, let It'll me be tell much you. more fun than going to heaven where everyone's sanctimonious and they got streets paved with gold. All right. I don't even like gold. <laughs> man, I love you, man. I love this guy. All right, but let me give you the good news. 